subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. And welcome to the iPhone SE versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 speed test. Now, hold on. I hear the objections already. This makes no sense. Why are you comparing these two? Let's get on with the boot up test. It's because it's been highly requested and it would just be unfair for me not to make a highly requested video to the fans of the channel. Also, if you take a look at last year, iPhone SE versus Galaxy Note 8 speed test, many of you did actually like this test here, over 4,000 likes, 300,000 views. And if you're watching this test, the iPhone SE just boot up faster than this thousand dollar smartphone on ios 12 beta 12 android oreo here for the note 9 and we're also rocking out with samsung experience version 9.5 all right guys so we have arrived at the application portion of this speed test what many would say is the actual speed test let's go ahead bring these together because se likes to slide around everything is closed out and they are connected to the same wi-fi network let's begin with calendar you can see that is the note 9 pretty clearly let's go into clock note 9 clearly again what about calculator you can see note 9 wins that one what about settings that's the note 9 again let's go back over here let's go into instagram you could see instagram first on the note 9 clicking over here to the profile page you can see note 9 definitely ahead for this Instagram in terms of the load time, it did win this. Now, when you're actually in there, it doesn't really matter too much. They both perform well. Let's go into Twitter and you can see Twitter is first for the Note 9, pretty much wins every time. I don't know when iOS is gonna get that updated. Let's go into Snapchat. You can see Snapchat is first for the Note 9. What about WhatsApp? And you can see WhatsApp first on the right. What about YouTube? And YouTube jumps ahead there for the Note 9, let's go into trending, and that's the Note 9 again, slightly. Both are very fast to load the YouTube. Let's go into Netflix, and you can see Netflix is first for the Note 9. And let's go ahead and just see if we can click a video here. So what about the office? And you could see it's very close. So when you're in the apps, it doesn't really matter. Let's go into Amazon, but those load times will make a difference. And you could see that the Note 9 definitely a little bit faster here and everything so far in the speed test over the SE. What about eBay? You can see clear jump and win goes to that Galaxy Note 9 there. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride and you could see Jetpack Joyride is ahead here for the Note 9. So casual game so far goes to the Note 9. So let's go ahead and open Slither and you could see Slither is open first for, I didn't even see that one. I think it might have been the SE, but that was a pretty close test. Let me know what you think down below. What about PUBG Mobile? And you can see, I'm going to go ahead and just skip through this one because it takes a while to load on both devices and see which one gets there to the match screen first. Okay, so as you've seen, the iPhone SE actually loaded to the match screen first, but the Note 9, can it get into the actual match first over the SE? Let's hit start 3, 2, 1, or will the SE win this one as well? Now, it looks like the Note 9 has a jump, but the SE might come back. Let's see which one can actually start playing, and the SE was ready to play first. So this could come down to the optimization of PUBG. It might be better for the iPhone and that probably would be the case on pretty much any iPhone. Let's go into video shop. You could see that's the Note 9 ready to record that video first. What about Geekbench? And you could see Geekbench was the iPhone SE. What about speed test? And you could see that was the Note 9. And what about Safari and internet browser from Samsung? Samsung had the low Google, so I'm going to call that one about a draw. So for the most part, the Note 9 won in pretty much every area, but loading that more graphically intensive, heavily optimized game, which is probably going to the fact that this is running iOS, not really the fact that it has so much power, it's so powerful. So I would call the Note 9 the winner here in the single core or the single application speed test. Okay, so let's test to see if we get any reloads on either one of these phones. Let's begin with the iPhone SE, go through these apps that we just opened, and you could see Geekbench 4, Nothing video shop was ready. PUBG Mobile pause in the match. Slither, we are getting out of there before we get eaten alive. Jetpack Joyride, pretty much ready to go. eBay, no problems. What about Amazon? Right where I left off. Netflix, right where I left off as well. YouTube, just fine. WhatsApp was ready. Snapchat was ready. 
what was that twitter i was gonna say geekbench instagram is ready here a little bit of a slight pause but that's not a reload calculator so ios 12 performance looking good here and yes he doesn't really choke up at all now testing the note 9 i don't expect any choke ups here as well this is 512 gigabytes of storage 8 gigabytes of ram snapdragon 845 and it looks like we had a slight pause here for pubg mobile it probably closed the match on us but i wouldn't consider that a reload that's probably because the match ended let's go into the jetpack joyride and I can hear people already. You need 512 gigs, eight gigabytes of RAM. You need Snapdragon 845 just to compete with an old iPhone. All the haters already. But the Android operating system forever has been able to do more than iOS. So yes, you need more power on an Android device than you do on iOS. And no reloads so far here for the Note 9. Great performance and there was absolutely zero reloads there. Just a little bit of the match closed on PUBG, but that wasn't a reload. So I'm calling this test a draw here for the Note 9 versus SE, at least in these applications. I think if you get a ton of tabs open in Safari, the SE will reload those. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick internet browsing test. I have the nickackermanchannel.com loaded up here. We're gonna hit go in three, two, one, and you can see that the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 ahead there on his first browsing test and you can see the SE chopping a little bit in comparison so yes so far note 9 a better internet browsing experience we know it's a better one in terms of the screen size but i'm just talking about speed here let's go to yahoo.com a pretty popular well-known website and see what i was talking about with the SE sliding around on the table maybe i should get a clear case for these comparisons let's go into yahoo.com and let's test out the Galaxy Note 9 versus the SE321 and see which one gets there first. And that is the Note 9 again. So the Note 9 definitely has a faster browsing experience. Whether it's more enjoyable depends on if you want a bigger screen or a more mobile one thumb, one handed kind of browsing experience. Okay, so can a two year old phone here in the SE beat the Note 9 in a render test? I don't think so, but let's see if iOS is faster. Let's hit gallery and next three, two, one and see which one can compile this first and i don't think it's going to but this is pretty close it's a close race and oh the se wins on this 35 second you know render test here over the note 9 that was pretty embarrassing <laughs> considering the price of this phone but at the same time you know what the note 9 does shoot much better video than this phone so you got to pick and choose the features you want or the software you want okay so let's go ahead and do a wi-fi speed test beginning with the iphone se then we'll do the note 9 now throughout this test we've seen a couple areas where the se is still pretty strong but for the most part i think day-to-day -day applications feel faster on the note 9 if you're doing video rendering it seems like the se with that apple a9 those chips for video rendering are just very efficient they've always been on the iphones i think video phones like if you're just going to be doing you know editing on your phone you got iMovie and everything for the apple device i think it's the better way to go let's go over here to the note 9 but if you're going to be like offloading your content on an sd card and you're going to run it over to your laptop you're going to use your own video editing software the note 9 is going to shoot 10 times better video so that can make a big difference as well when it comes to shooting that 4k 60 you don't get that for the se and you could see massively better download speeds wow blowing the se out of the water which makes sense it has much faster modems than this device so in the real world the 4g lte speeds are way faster for the note 9 as well so if you're looking for just internet speeds the note 9 is a massive win over the iphone se so the final geekbench scores are in and this is interesting because the sc actually wins in the single core the note 9 blows it away in the multi-core but this this is crazy like i don't think the note 9 should lose in any test versus the sc considering that this is the a9 they're already on the a11 going into the a12 that's pretty embarrassing to me and it makes me feel definitely annoyed that you know i paid 1300 dollars for this and this 150 dollars phone can actually win in a couple of areas okay so i've arrived at the final conclusion and my conclusion is this i, I didn't make this video to convince you to buy this over this nobody in their right mind is gonna buy an se over a note 9 these these phones aren't really comparable that's why i'm not making a full comparison between them but what's kind of crazy is that the se was able to win in some performance tests 
versus the Note 9, concluding the boot up, the single core on Geekbench, the video rendering test, and even that heavy, heavily graphically intensive PUBG Mobile. And I think for the price of the Note 9, this phone shouldn't lose in a single area against the SE. And it probably would lose to the 6S, the 7, and in those similar areas. So I think still Samsung needs to do some work in making their phones blow away Apple in the speed department. Maybe the S10 is gonna do this, but for now, the Note 9, I still think is on the top. It's one of the best phones, king of the Android land, and probably one of the best phones, if not the best phone you can buy right now. And this stuff doesn't really make a huge difference in the day to day. You're buying this phone for the S Pen and all of that. But the SE for a cheap phone, still hanging in there. But we need to see an update to this phone, but I'm not sure if Apple's ever going to bring that. That's it for me. This was fun. If you guys enjoyed it, click the like button for me. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more. I will.